Today's topic, what we're going to have a look at, is consumer surplus, as you can see here. Now, the easiest way of doing this is to start with a definition. And if we define it, it's basically the difference between what consumer is willing to pay for a good, as shown by the demand curve, and what they actually pay for the good, which is shown by the equilibrium price. Let's see this on a diagram. Okay, we can see this diagram here. We've got an equilibrium price in the market of P1, and therefore at a quantity Q1. But actually, what does this show us? This actually, we can see that for a number of people, albeit not many, they would have been willing to pay that price here. For another small number of people, they'd have been willing to pay this price. So quite a lot of people are paying a lower price than they would be willing to do. Hence the term consumer surplus. Now the easiest way to think about this then is the area of consumer surplus on this initial diagram is P1AB. So consumer surplus is equal to P1AB. So remember that it's simply the area above the equilibrium price but below the demand curve. So all that shaded area is consumer surplus. Let's think about an example though. What happens if this market is like we say EasyJet and they're thinking of reducing their prices. Well let's see what happens to consumer surplus. Let's have a new price, P2 at Q2 and we'll label, call this point C. Well in this case we can see that the area of consumer surplus has increased. The area above the equilibrium price but below the demand curve. So our new area of consumer surplus is this whole area. So consumer surplus now is P2, P1, sorry, P2, A, C. What can we say then? Well, with this reduction in price, we can see that consumer surplus has increased and the area of increase, or the change, has been P2, P1, B, C. So that basically describes consumer surplus.